Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, recently I found myself obsessed, or re-obsessed I should say, with the Xbox 360. Aside from the PlayStation 2, it is probably my favourite console of all time and I've always found it amazing just how well it held up over the course of its 13 or so years lifespan. This is a console that was released in 2005, yet somehow managed to run games like Battlefield 4, Skyrim and GTA 5, all with just 512 megabytes of RAM. It's the latter of those releases that we're focusing on today, GTA 5. I wanted to revisit the original version of this game to see how well it's holding up on 360 in its fully updated state, and then see what sort of PC hardware you need to match the base console experience. Sure, GTA Online is no longer supported, the game runs at 720p and you'll be lucky to see a constant 30fps for more than a few seconds at a time, but this is still one of the cheapest ways to enjoy Rockstar's open world masterpiece, even if it is far from perfect. So let's talk about the Xbox 360 performance. As I said before, the game runs at 1280 x 720 with plenty of jagged edges and a frame rate that usually sits between 23 and 30 FPS, dropping to the lower end of those figures during intense scenes. I've even managed to get a real-time FPS counter set up so that you can see exactly how the last last, soon to be last, last, last generation version runs. We've definitely been spoilt by the PC and 8th generation console versions, that's for sure, because this doesn't look as pretty as I swear it used to, but it still carries its own certain charm in a way. Maybe it's just nostalgia, but if you are a little short on cash and want to replay the story, then this is still a very valid way to do so. Los Santos on a sunny day still looks pretty good, and driving out toward the countryside as the sun sets still feels pretty magical. It's a game that not only continues to look good, but impress from a technical standpoint as well. This is a perfect example of making the most out of the hardware at hand. Let's move on to the PC version here. The uh, PC version of Grand Theft Auto V isn't a port of the first console release like its predecessor GTA 4. I think Rockstar probably realised that that wasn't the best idea. Thankfully though, after years of tweaks and updates, it is still quite forgiving on lower end hardware and thanks to the customizable graphics settings, it can be personalised to run with at least 30 FPS on a wide range of components. So how low can we go? What hardware do we need as a minimum to match the Xbox 360 experience in 2021? All we need to do here is get the game running at 1280 x 720 resolution and hit 30 FPS most of the time. That shouldn't be too hard to do, right? Now we can't try and use PC equivalent specs to a 360 as it just won't work. That's where console optimization comes into play and as far as equivalent visual settings go, well we probably don't need to aim for much higher than low to get a similar looking experience. First of all, I tried to get away with an old dual core chip, a Pentium G2020T. This was a bit of an underestimation as to how much power I'd actually need, as the two core CPU caused missing texture issues, huge stutters and frame time problems. I then decided on a quad core option but dropped the idea of a graphics card completely. This is the AMD A8 6600K, a 4-core APU with integrated 8570D graphics. It's based on the obsolete and rather short-lived FM2 socket, and even this on its own with just 4 gigs of RAM is at least enough to start and run the game, albeit with about 15 frames per second. The 360, despite its issues, still manages a better frame rate than this, so I added another 2 gigs of DDR3, and found that this made a huge improvement. I'd say 6GB then is the minimum amount of RAM I'd suggest for playing this game on PC these days. We saw our frame rate practically double with less than double the amount of memory added. While this did mean a 30fps average to match that of Microsoft's aging console, this was only applicable to the countryside and more sparsely populated areas of the map. Going anywhere near downtown Los Santos meant drops to the low 20s, and perhaps even lower than that, but in my opinion this is still impressive considering the hardware that we're using. And considering that GTA 5 on PC is also in some respects a different game to GTA 5 on Xbox 360. 
So how could we achieve a more consistent frame rate? Well, here comes the 1 GB HD5570 from AMD. It was an entry-level card when it launched 11 years ago, but it offered more gaming power than the cheaper HD5450, which, as we all know, is so bad it's practically achieved meme status. With 1 GB of DDR3 at our disposal, it was actually possible to hit and maintain 30 FPS for a lot of the time, and in fact, the frame dips were less severe and less frequent than they are on the Xbox. I was even able to tweak some of the settings, albeit ever so slightly, and add FXAA to try and get rid of some of those jaggers that are so prevalent on Microsoft's 7th gen console. I also kept the frame rate to 30fps here to make any dips seem less severe because although we were seeing close to 35 or higher every so often, going from that to 27 in an instant feels way worse than going from a capped 30fps to that lower figure. But there we go, if you want to play GTA 5 for as cheap as possible in 2021, then you have a couple of choices. You can either pick up a used 360 or PS3 and a second-hand copy of the game, like me, which cost me about £3, or you can throw a cheap HD 5570 into your system and get a similar experience when using a similar or identical CPU. That is probably the bare minimum though, and we haven't even touched on GTA Online, which I'm sure will probably run just as bad on both the 360 and the PC, but perhaps we'll cover that another time, considering that it is obsolete on the Xbox 360 now, or at least not obsolete, but just not supported with newer updates. Those looking for newer hardware and an even better frame rate, along with better visual clarity, can opt for the AMD Athlon 3000G, which combines a two-core, four-threaded processor with integrated and overclockable Vega 3 graphics. And this will do a fine job at 900p with GTA 5. Still, I think it's amazing how well the Xbox 360 held up over the course of its relevancy, and I'd argue that it's still very relevant today for anyone looking to play through the classics either for the first time or the tenth. Anyone on a very tight budget as well could do a lot worse than picking one of these up because there are still some great games like Battlefield, like GTA and a few uh, Assassin's Creed games too available for the console and that isn't even the old ones. A lot of the uh, games that came to this in the final few years of its life also came to the PS4 and Xbox One so you'll be surprised what you can actually find on the 360 and PlayStation 3 these days. Hopefully we'll have a few more comparisons because I also bought a brand new copy of Battlefield 4 for the 360. So yeah, if you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.